What up guys over here at DNA Slithers and Critters? Not in the reptile room today because we're going to talk to you about how to get started breeding rats. What up guys? So you decided to start breeding rats. Now you're probably wondering, this is going to be a task, how do I go about and do it? We're here today to show you how. So what we like to use for, to just ideally for a small startup, um, I would use the Reptile Basic tub. This is the tub that we used to start before we became large scale. Um, works great. You can buy them on the website reptilebasics.com. Uh, the website link will be in the description below. Um, what's nice about it though, there's a spot right here. You just hold the food um, and then the water spigot. We use the low pressure system with uh, water nipples. You can use water bottles, it works great too. Um, just depends on if you wanna fill water bottles or not, which that's for another video in another day. Um, once you get the tubs ordered in, they work great. If you wanna do a Freedom Reader rack like this, it's gonna cost you a couple thousand dollars in shipping and then you possibly have to wait. These are usually ready available and uh, if you order over $100 through them, you actually get free shipping, which is cool because um, shipping can get pretty expensive with some heavy items. Um, so once you get the tub, um, you get the tub in, you're going to want to figure out what kind of bedding you're going to want to use. Now there's several different types of bedding. Some people say, oh, I better use, um, don't use pine because it's bad and your reptiles might get affected by it. Um, that's all we use actually is pine and it seems to work great you can do a cedar cedar has a natural bug repellent um, which is going to in turn prevent any type of um, mites on your rodents and stuff um, may cost a little bit it all depends on what you can get in your area uh, for our value we like to use the pine um, just because i can get a really good deal on it a lot of the breeders have used it. I switched from Aspen just because of cost. This stuff works great. As you can see, it's pretty fine. Um, there is kind of pellets and stuff like that you can use that absorb and expand when the urine hits. Those are great for smaller scale. Um, you can always throw some, uh, what we use is dry stall. It's uh, fancy words for kitty litter basically. Uh, you sprinkle some of this in the bottom of the grow outs that we use and it actually helps reduce uh, the ammonia levels so your animals are healthier as well as you're not uh, having to smell them so much. Now once you get your bedding picked out you know you can do paper, you can do the aspen like some people, you can do the um, pine, you're going to want to get something to measure it out as long as you're not i guess doing it, it won't matter you can get some kind of scoop just to we cut it so it measures out the right size like these are our bigger tub scoops so we have two different sizes for two different tubs um that way we know as long as we're filling this up i got enough bedding and i can just be quick like you're seeing um sorry i'm getting a little brain fart here it's been a long night uh, but I digress Once you get that bedding in there though, and you get that all set up you got the scooper you got it poured in um, You're gonna want to obviously look at getting some kind of rats and rat genetics um, I would recommend you get a qualified breeder um, Somebody who you can count on or have seen their stock. I would personally if I'm bringing or buying stuff, would want to check out how their operation is ran. You know, maybe just show up and be like, hey, let me just see a few tubs and see how things are kept. Um, sometimes pet stores, you know, they have bugs and stuff and you got to be careful and you don't want to get them quarantine your animals, rats, feeders, just like you do uh, your snakes and reptiles. You know, you don't want to bring nothing into your facility or to your operation that's tainted and brings bad, you know, quality stock to start with. Um, so that's huge. Now, once you got that going, let's go ahead and cut over to the spot where I usually clean tubs. And that way you can see 
um, how we run those reptile basic tubs. Uh, if you have a bigger tub, you're gonna probably wanna do a different size ratio, but you're gonna wanna, for this, this is what we found works best. So let's go check it out. Come on. Oh, hey, just uh, put in the work. No. So guys, once you get that figured out, you get your rats, you get your bedding, um, you're gonna need some food. Now, food is gonna be one of the most important things uh, about the nutrition. Um, if you don't have a right fat content, the babies are gonna come out skinny. You're not gonna have moms that are gonna wanna nurse if they're not getting proper nutrition. So what we like to use here is the Missouri rodent. As you can see, we love our Missouri. Um, works great. We get it here at a good deal. Um, I buy so much though, I get an even better deal than the public does. So that's a perk of being a rat breeder um, and buying in such mass quantities. But you guys don't want to end up spending honestly more than $35 a bag. Uh, it cuts, it gets expensive. If you go ship Missouri from their website, it's actually going to cost you the 50 pound bag will cost you about $50 and uh, no, sorry, about the same price, $35 in shipping as the bag's $35 on the website last time I knew. Um, so you don't want to end up paying a bunch of money, but you don't want to give them just garbage food, guys. You want to give them quality because it's just like us eating cheeseburgers or us from McDonald's or us eating, you know, home cooked cheeseburgers. You know, you're gonna, it's the same meal, but what is in that meal is gonna uh, directly affect your snakes, you know? So you want the quality where it counts. Uh, Kent's another good brand. Um, Harlan, uh, Lab Tech's another good brand. You might wanna look in doing some, uh, your own blend with seeds and like, grains and corns and stuff like that um, it really just depends on what you guys want to do um, and how you want to go about about it but you want to make sure that you have quality that's the main thing because if your babies aren't coming out right um, mom will eat them even just because she doesn't feel like it's a good environment for them or she just won't breed now you can see my rats better um, so you got to have a good water system. You can either do at this point, um, if you're just doing a couple tubs, I would recommend just going to get some big uh, water bottles and just doing that. You'll have to do it about every day. Go ahead and top them off and change them out. Um, fresh water. They do drink a lot. If they don't get access to water or food in an overabundance, they're not going to want to breed. As well as you possibly look at the parents again, either eating each other or eating the babies. And that's not what you want. It's not right to let them suffer. I know it, you know, they just keep eating and eating a lot of food, but it's an animal. And at the end of the day, just because something's intended to be food, guys, doesn't mean it shouldn't have a good life. So that's one thing you got to consider when you go ahead and you get into that um, care. It is a live animal. So, for science, I just noticed this girl, and so you guys can learn more. This girl is actually fighting a cold, it looks like. It's a Siamese rat. Come here, it's okay. Um, what happens is they get mucus around their eyes like that, and that could be from bedding changes, stuff like that. But the mucus around her eyes is actually an indication that she's fighting off a cold or something which is unfortunate. So what I'll do is I'll check her later tonight, uh, make sure she's doing okay. Poor girl. Just because something's intended for food, guys, doesn't mean it shouldn't live a good life. Um, but that's one of those things that you want to look for when you go in and get animal health. I guess this was perfect. If you see stuff like that, don't get that animal. Um, obviously, I'm not going to call her because she seems fine. It's just on the tail end of it, it looks like, because the mucus looks dried on there. Um, 
but then you can after you get the good um sorry guys that's kind of just still taking it in that she's uh affected right now she'll be okay top this off and put her back poor girl And this is diatomaceous earth. We spray them. It's better to be, have preventative maintenance. Um, there is a video. It's called Treating Your Mites. Uh, my rats have mites and how to treat them. Um, that talks more into detail about the ratios and all that. Beautiful. Just a bunch of pups and babies in here. But you guys want to leave the animals together. That's the main thing. You don't want to pull the parents, the dad, see this is the male. You can tell by those big old balls he's got there. Also, fun fact, moms are going to be the only ones that are going to have nipples. Now, you may be asking, how, why are you holding the rats like that? Why are you not crating on them? Um, this is called tailing. As long as you grab this much of the tail or less, closer the better, um, it won't injure them. They may try and spin. At that point, I'll usually set my hand on them or let them grab onto my pant leg. She's got... Sometimes the moms are bad at cleaning, and what happens is they get a poopy butt. Poopy butt is literally stuck poop in their sack or their anus, as we'll say for the video. And if it actually doesn't get cleared, they can uh, not poop and pass. So you actually have to go in there and clean it yourself or soak them. Um, be careful though, sometimes it can be actually a wound from it just sitting there. You know, it can literally happen within a couple days. Mom gets lazy. You guys are learning all sorts of stuff today. That's good though, because I want you guys to be aware of the stuff that can happen. Um, you know, if that happens, just clean them, watch them, make sure the bottoms stay good. Sometimes you'll notice the pinkies have like a little white pus pocket on the umbilical cord. Sorry about that, guys. My wife called. Um, you know, just you got to stay on those butts. Um, main thing is you don't want them to build up. Uh, if it gets bad, obviously, either if you're trying to save it, you can take it to a vet. Typically, I'll feed off that night those ones to the animals that are hurt and injured. Um, Let's show you what a female looks like so that way you can kind of get an idea. She's going to actually, like I said, be carrying nipples. Um, the males don't. There she's also will literally have a vagina. Um, it looks obviously different. You don't have that big pudge. Obviously with these bigger ones you can see um, that's a male. Got some Siamese. I love my Siamese rats. Don't you look cute? She's pregnant. But you can see there's that hole right there. Hopefully I don't get flagged for new for graphic content. LOL. Um now females, their nipples won't be enlarged until after the first litter. So if someone's telling you that they've never had babies before and their nipples are big, like those girls that I was showing you, that's gonna actually indicate to you. Um, that they're lying to you and their nipples shouldn't be big so you just keep them together and now they're gonna have babies guys this sounds crazy I always say on average about eight is what you can count for but I've had people reports up to 27 per litter 27 rats and what's crazy every three to four weeks you're gonna have a litter which is insane because mom gets pregnant right after she has the baby she goes into heat within the same 24 hours so you're gonna just have that one mom cranking at least you know 15 babies every month so that's something to think about you can quickly be overran you don't want to get a ton of rats and not to know what to do with them obviously you just get more snakes 
or maybe the local pet stores will buy them. Um, I live in Colorado, so you actually have to be licensed to sell to the pet stores. But this seems about it to, to you guys. Um, just keep the parents in there. The moms are going to literally just breed. They're, that's their job. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, what's going on within the time that they hit about uh, 275 or sorry 175 to 150 grams they're gonna start wanting to produce babies um, and as soon as they do you know you can count on after mom as long as the males in there three to four weeks at by the time you're pulling the open eyes rats from them you're having another litter from that same mom and what you'll pull is stuff you know, this is about on the smaller side because the eyes look more Asian, I say, um, instead of being wide open. Uh, but this is a, generally speaking, a, what we consider a pup slash wean. Um, they get pulled around, if you want to weigh, around 30 grams is what we c consider uh, a good weight to pull. Sometimes, though, you just get some crazy genetics. You got these big fat pinkies that are that weight. So, you know, use discretion when you do that. And we'll be doing a video on how to tell um, what's a good size rat to pull from the parents. Because I know sometimes you don't want to, you get worried, you pull them too soon. Next thing you know, they don't realize how to function in life without mom and dad there holding their hand. They try to fly the coop too soon. So that's about it, guys. You know, good genetics. Watch out for unhealthy rats. Of course, we did do a rat health 101 with me in a car, and I got some weird looking eyebrows going on. Um, so you can refer to that. Otherwise, you know, just keep them together. They will breed. There is a rare chance though, just like humans, some of us aren't fertile, but typically speaking, most rats will have babies. That's, they're great at it. The whole saying of breed like rabbits, it's breed like rats. So, peace and love. I hope you liked that video. If you guys want to see more content, we're pushing. This is our niche. Rats, rodents, mice, ASFs, guinea pigs, quail. We do it all. So, peace and love, guys. Have a good day.